All right, so here we go, finishing up the notes, um, picking up where we left off. Draw the ground state electron configuration for iron. Well, let me get a pen here. Iron is in fourth row, which makes it 3D6. And so ground state electron configuration is going to be 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6, 4S2, and here's where we go back to D, third level D, so 3D6. Showed an excited state configuration would look like. Um, well, one of these S electrons would jump up here, so instead of 4S2, 3D6, it would be 4S1, 3D7. And then is this paramagnetic or diamagnetic? To figure that out, you have to draw the orbital notation for this last sublevel to be filled. So D gets five blanks. If you forgot how many blanks to draw on each sublevel, count the number of elements that are in a row in that sublevel. And in D, there's 10 elements in a row in the D sublevel. And 10 divided by two gives you five because 10 electrons can go in the D, each D sublevel. So two electrons per blank is five blanks. So we fill in six electrons, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So because it has one, two, three, four unpaired electrons, it is very much paramagnetic. Even in its excited state, it's still a paramagnetic atom. Group six and 11 on the periodic table, they have a special ground state configuration where instead of like, let's say, chromium, chromium is 3D4, or that's what it should be, 3D4, so it should have valence electrons that look like this. It has 4S, 1, 2, and then 3D, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. This is not as stable as if this little electron right here were to jump over there. There's something about a D sublevel that get, makes it like extra stable when each orbital has at least one electron that's more stable than having this 4s sublevel filled and this one with only four electrons in it. So this is not an excited state configuration though. I don't want you to get that confused. This is just simply, you know, nature prefers things to be stable and this element is more stable when this one 4s electron becomes a 3d. And the reason that it can do this is because the energy level difference between 4s and 3d really isn't that much um, and so that's why you know it can do this and these are the other elements that do pretty much the same thing uh, but again not an excited state configuration it's just a more stable ground state configuration then um, the noble gas configuration is um, basically when you have like giant atoms that you know maybe beyond about row four or five the electron configuration notation gets like really, really long. And so instead of writing all of that out, you go back to the last noble gas and write the valence electrons that came after it. So for sodium, you would, instead of writing 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, you would just write neon and 3s1. And you can do the same thing for magnesium. So if we were to do, say, pick a really, really big one. Um, how about iodine? Iodine's huge we would, instead of doing 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, yada, 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 all the way to iodine, you just go back to the last noble gas, which was krypton, and pick up there. So after krypton, you move on to row 5. So you have 5s2, and then 4d10, and because it's a noble gas, it's going to be 5p, not noble gas, because this is a halogen, it's going to be 5p5. Anything p5 is a halogen. Um, and so this is significantly shorter than writing out the entire electron configuration notation. So the notations lead us to quantum numbers, which is just basically math with electrons. And there are four quantum numbers that can be assigned to every electron in an element. And the first quantum number is based on what energy level is that electron in. Currently, we have possible values of 1 through 7 right now. The periodic table is not a finite thing. It is, you know, constantly changing. And so one day, maybe when your kids are in college, 
they'll learn about you know energy level eight, nine, and ten. Uh, but the big thing is, is as n increases, the electron has more energy and it's farther away from the nucleus. Kind of neat thing is, is the connection to the number of orbitals, that's the blanks that you would draw in the orbital notations, is equal to n squared. So in energy level one, when n equals one, then you only have one orbital. When n equals two, two squared, you have four orbitals. And this one orbital in n equals one is done by the s sublevel. These four orbitals, one s uh, orbital and three p orbital. If you move on to n equals three, we have nine possibilities. And that's one s, three p orbitals, and your five d orbitals. And if you notice, these are going up by odds, and that also is not a coincidence. The second quantum number is the shape of the orbital that the electron is in. It's also just known as the sublevel. That's your, where your S, P, D, and F comes in. The number of possible shapes is equal to the energy level. So energy level one only has one possible shape, the S. Energy level two has both an S and a P. And then energy level three has an S, a P, and a D. Energy level four has an S, P, D, and F. And energy level five, currently, yeah, we only have S, P, and D for energy level five. Uh, we don't have an F yet, but that's not to say it won't ever exist, because these are possible shapes. Doesn't mean that they're there yet. And the only values that you can have for a particular um, L value is from zero for an S uh, sublevel all the way up to N minus one. So if we're at energy level three, we cannot have an L value of four. That's not possible because the biggest L value we can have for n equals three would be L equals two for the D sublevel on energy level three. Third quantum number tells you which direction the orbital is facing, you know, in, in the three dimensions X, Y, and Z. Its values can only range from negative L to positive L. So if we're in a, say, a P sublevel where um, L equals one, well, m sub l can only range from negative 1, it can be 0, or it can be positive 1, that's it. You wouldn't be able to have an m sub l value of, say, like plus 2. And the way that you know what's what is you draw your orbitals. So for that p sublevel, you have three blanks for a p, and you label 0 in the middle, and then you count down to the left and count up to the right. And whichever blank your electron goes in tells you what your m sub l value is. And remember that each orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons, one with an upspin and one with a downspin, which leads us to the fourth quantum number. And this uh, is talking about which direction the electron is spinning. We call them an up or down spin. Um, and that's pretty much all you need to know is, you know, what direction would you draw the arrow? If you would draw the arrow with an upspin, then its m sub s value is a plus one half. If you draw it with a downspin, its m sub s value is a negative one half. And gotta remember, anytime you're putting paired electrons in a blank, they have to have opposite spins. You can't have a blank where the electrons have the same spin. That's just not possible. So how do we connect all of this to our configurations? Um, you draw out the orbital notation for the last sublevel filled. You don't have to draw out the orbital notation for all of it, thank goodness, because that would take forever. Then if I'm asking you specifically for the last electron, circle that last electron, and then find the four quantum numbers for that electron. If I'm asking you for a different electron, then circle that electron and find the four quantum numbers for it. And I'm going to take a break for a second and make sure that my video is not getting too long. No, we're doing good. Okay. Got to make sure these things don't go over about 15 minutes or else they get too big to post up on the internet. Okay, so we're going to write the four quantum numbers for each electron in lithium. So since I asked for back. Since I asked for each electron, then I've got to draw out the orbital notation for the whole thing, but thankfully lithium's really small. Lithium only has three electrons. It's got 1s2, 2s1. So I'm going to draw that out. So 1s2, so it gets both, and then 2s only gets one. So I'm going to label these. This will be electron 1, this is electron 2, and this is electron 3. So the four quantum numbers for electron 1. Well, it's in energy level 1, so n equals 1. It is in sublevel s, so l is equal to 0. 
it is in the blank, that would be labeled zero, because when L is zero, that means M sub L is automatically zero. And then M sub S for the first electron is an up spin, so that means it is positive one half. For electron number two, this guy right here with the down spin, the N, the L, and the M sub L values are all going to be the same because it's the same blank. What's going to be different is the fact that it's a down spin, so it's going to have an M sub S of negative one half. And this goes with the Pauli exclusion principle in saying that no two electrons in an element can have the same four quantum numbers. They can have three of the same, but that fourth one had better be different. Third and final electron, we're now in energy level two, so N is two. It's still sublevel S, so S is zero, which means the blank is still labeled a zero. And we're back to an up spin, so it's plus one half. <clears throat> Four quantum numbers for the last electron in arsenic. Uh, arsenic is 4P3. So I'm going to draw the P sublevel. P sublevels get three blanks. And because I have three electrons in that P, I go one, two, three. Hun's rule says every blank gets one before anybody gets a second. So now I'm going to do the four, uh, the four quantum numbers. N is your energy level. So we're in energy level four. Uh, L is the sublevel. So we're in P. P was just given a value of one. M sub L is our blank label. So remember we label the center one as zero count down to the left, count up to the right, and so our last electron right here went in blank number one, so plus one, and then M sub S, we drew an up arrow, so that means it's plus one half. Here are your practice questions that I want you guys to work out. Uh, the lab this Friday will just be a flame test lab, um, basically I'm going to let you burn every salt that I have in my storeroom. Uh, no formal lab write-up. And the chapter seven quiz is gonna be on Tuesday of next week, which means that is also when your practice problems will be due. Pay attention on number 72. Don't write out the configuration for the whole thing. Just do the noble gas configuration for the practice um, elements on number 72. Um, also on Friday will be your lab write up for the Hess's Law lab will be due this Friday. So make sure you have all that. If you'll have any questions, bring them to class with you tomorrow. And that's all I have to say about 